welcome to Warhammer Wednesday. Um, in this video we're going to look at, well, you probably guessed by the title, the Warhammer 5th edition box set. I'm going to have a look in it because I've just got hold of it. But just a bit of background, I've been, I've been an R-ing for a while about wanting to start playing a rank and file game and I thought as I like the old world and I play many sort of other games in there, you know, the role play board games such as Warhammer Quest, Advanced Hero Quest, Cessna, I might as well actually play that game. I did consider Kings of War because it's the game that's currently living, it's a living game so a bit too easy to get hold of but I sort of downloaded the rules, looked at the models and just something didn't gel with me. The world didn't seem real enough, it just seemed like a world that's created just to fight in. Uh, a lot of uh, uh, um, fantasy flight games sort of settings have that problem like the uh, was it tearing off the descent saying it just doesn't seem seems like a world that's been created specifically for the game that it's supporting whereas the old world because it had many other games and novels and such forth it seemed like a, a real world a living world like middle earth kind of thing so I really like it so I was gonna see how viable it is to play Warhammer Fantasy Battles in, well originally I planned this to do this series in 2019, but now it's 2020. So last year I actually got hold of the 6th edition books, I figured I might start with the 6th edition, uh, mainly because I've got, due to, uh, I've always bought White Dwarf, uh, not so much nowadays, but back when Warhammer was a thing and specifically for the Lord of the Rings SPG game. Uh, but I used to love reading the Warhammer articles in it as well, but one of the things I've got in there was the Kislev, uh, or Kislev um, mini supplement, mini army book. And still love reading this, I think it's great. So I got this, so I thought well, I'll buy the rule book to go along with this. So as you can see, in the process of reading the rules, I think I'm up to the sort of fluffy section now. As you can see here, yep. Uh, so I read the rules. Yeah, liked it. I uh, also got some army books. I started with this back in October, which I think is the one of the first ones I got. Vampire Counts, that's why I planned to do this series back in October. I thought I'd start with this as it was Halloween month, never got round to it. Uh, always wanted to do Bretonia because I got a Green Knight model I bought many, many years ago when it first came out, uh, just because I love knights. So I got that, so I thought Bretonia model, I love knights. Let's do a Bretonian army. <coughs> and also the Empire. I always figured this would be good to have for the Roll Hammer fancy roleplay to get a bit of background uh, information. Sorry, I'm going to cough. <coughs> Sorry, dry mouth from recording a lot of videos. I should have bought some water. But anyway, so I probably will actually still, I know it sounds weird being this is a fifth edition unboxing, but I probably will still carry on collecting sixth as well. I like the rules. Um, seventh and eighth don't really appeal to me. Uh, I've read the rules or, uh, or scale through the rules in the book. Yeah, they're good. Eight's probably a bit, I don't know. I don't know. So eight's really expensive as well to buy. And yeah, it's the latest one, all the books. So go figure. Um, so I probably won't play those, but definitely sixth. Now, sixth was a sort of maybe a return to form. This is the Normandy's edition, I guess, if you like. Um, so, But I'm kind of, something about 90s Games Workshop that I love, the sort of red box era, as they call it, you know. I love Talisman, and Tal I don't own it, but I'm going to try and track it down. Talisman 3rd Edition, I just love, people didn't like it because of the art style, but I love it. You know, it's all skulls and really zany, and that's sort of the era of war hammer I really love. So I decided to have a pop at the 5th edition, and so took a crack and bought this. This comes from, uh, I've got this on eBay. It comes from a shop on eBay called Exquisite Fantasy Board Games with a hyphen in between each word, which I'll put a link to in the description. They are a brilliant seller. Their shop is stock packed of classic Warhammer bits, whether it's fancy uh, 40K, if you're into that. So this is now my favorite shop on uh, eBay. So yeah, highly recommended. Really good communication. I got this during the height of the current situation and he, they managed to get it sent to me, which massive hats off so uh want to give a big shout out to those first but yeah got this this um it's different they, they were selling different sort of tiers of this if you like they had a sort of slightly damaged one pre all painted already for like relatively cheap well compared to modern games anyway or this one here it's not on the sprue but nothing's been painted so i got this so it's like the, i guess the middle tier if you like um 
<coughs> you know, it was already open, already used, but nothing painted, nothing damaged. So, and this is complete. I've had a quick look through already, and it's totally complete as it stated. So, hats off to uh, Exquisite Fancy Board Games, brilliant seller. So, yeah, we have the box. I can't really turn it over, show you the back. Uh, I don't want to damage it. There's a lot of weight in this, but. Uh, you know, standard Games Workshop exquisite art here. So that's all what we're getting inside. I mean, so we're getting Brits Bretonians and Lizardmen. Now, I've never owned any Liz Games Workshop Lizardmen models, so that would be great. did own some TSR ones back in late 80s, early 90s. I think I've still got them uh, for D&D purposes, whereas now I don't have to worry. Got a whole army. And it comes with all the bits, because when I thought about starting, I forgot about you need specialist dice. Comes with these. I don't know if 6th edition uses the same scatter and uh, artillery dice, range dice, is it? I believe. I'll have a look. Um, but yeah, what we're going to get in here, we got 12 Bretonian Knights, 24 Bretonian Bowmen, 32 Lizardmen Skinks, 20 Lizardmen, uh, what's it say? Saurus? Ooh, reading upside down, so forgive me. 152 page battle book. Battle? 112 page rule book. Oh, well, that's good. I don't know. Painting guide, getting started. Free card buildings. So that's these here. So they're cool. Old hammer buildings are great. A roster pad. Nine magic cards. Which I'm assuming are these cool. 12 assorted dice. Two range rulers. Two play sheets. Fire effect templates. Unit file record cards. And a partridge in a pear tree. This is uh, batch number 102,757. If you want, <laughs> I don't know why you want that. Um, and this was from 1996. So, uh, yeah, that mid 90s is brilliant. And it's called the Red Box era because most things come in red boxes like this on the edge, including Talisman Third. So, what we got in here. Is your twizzle sticks, your range rulers. These are 18 inches. It's like two different shades of red. One's very faded. The first thing you used to do with these is throw them away and get a tape measure. But if you didn't have a tape measure, always a great thing to have so you can measure stuff straight out of the bag. A uh, bit of bubble wrap here. Now, I don't know what you want to look at first, if you want to look at the plastic which is in this here, which I guess probably wise to. I'm not going to get it all out, but I can assure you it is all here because I've already got it all out and repacked it. But, yeah, if I... So what we have here is we have the horses, and they come in bases, the slot of, slot of bases. And we have our knights, and if I can find one that's pretty much assembled. Yeah, so we have our knights. Uh, I don't think anything's been glued. You can see it's all wobbly, so I'll probably be... First thing, job I'll be doing is taking it all apart and gluing it. I'm not too sure about the knights, but... There you go. Uh, the shield has a stag with a unicorn helmet, so I don't know whether I'm going to take my time to see what all the shields are. Some sort of phoenix with a a dragon, see if I can do a bit more match up with the helmet. I don't know if that's taking things too far. I'll have to have a think about my Bretonian things. Another unicorn helmet guy here with a stag on his shield again, so these are the same, so I'd like to mix the shields up anyway. So yeah, that's that. So there's those. Uh, so we've got 12 of those. And also, 24 Bretonian Bowmen. Like these. Uh, good, managed to pick up one that's the same, pretty much. Oh, these are they look very much like they were sculpted by the Perry Twins. Um, am I picking up all the same ones here? Yes, I am. Uh, they. Yes, I'm sure there are some variants. Yet yeah, there is. Here we go. Got some variants. I just managed to pick up all the ones. So you do have ones with the sort of helmet like that. That ones just have more of a. I forget the helmet types. 
someone can let me know. I forgot what the helmets are called. Uh, is that a bayonet type? No, that's got a face. Anyway, helmets. Uh, and then you have two types of uh, lizard men, and you have the skinks, which are the big ones here. This one, if you see anything like this where it's missing arm, all the arms are there. I put them together. We have a gun with shields, so this is good. I believe these are now in Age of Sigma or something else. Not lizard men anymore, is it? Seraphon? Seraphon? But anyway, this is um, Warhammer rather than Sigma, so just something about mid 90s, late 80s to mid 90s sculpts are just brilliant. And these are the Saras. Someone please tell me how to pronounce that. It's even got a bit of the uh, sprue still on there, so I'll sort that out. Around. So there's like a load of those as well, and these little type guys. So um, I wasn't really interested in the uh, lizard man. I'm interested in the knights. That doesn't mean I'm not going to paint them up, though. Again, all bits are in here, so it hasn't got a helmet. Ah, easy. They are all here, so... Oh, that's interesting. I'm glad I did this. Try to see if I can... I don't think any are glued, because I tried to put a helmet off earlier on, and it didn't come off, but i just seen it's got a little nook that fits into the back of the hole here. Everyone's probably got this set, probably knows. But yeah, like that. Is this the dude in Warhammer Crest on a horse? That'd be good. Yeah, so that's the plastic, so I might get them all out because let's see. So this is going to keep me occupied during a lockdown, I should imagine. In fact, I've got far too much to do already, so that's nice. Oh, don't want to lose bits. So what I'm gonna do just slide that across. Um next up, it's all the paper more papery type components. Hold on, let me just have a rearrange of everything. So I'm losing a head already there. This is all the papery components. Um, again, these all look to be complete. So, you have the shields. Means you have these shields here. You have eight of these in there, I've checked. They're going to go around the top of the tower, which you get to in a minute. And we also have these, which are awesome. I might actually make some of my own for these, just for uh, terrain projects, little posters. Like warning posters, I can't see what it says. It says it looks like it's in France, France, in France, in French. I'm guessing that top one says attention, uh, attention, le lizard, and that's far too small for me to read. I may try and magnify that later on. I'll wait till later on. Let's see if I can do it now. Hold on. <laughs> Will this work? Uh, 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 sort of. Anyway, <laughs> failed attempt. Uh, I think that's just scrap from, from doors. Um, yeah, there's another one. But yeah, it even has the transfers. I believe these are transfers that you used to. You'd be used to put on shields and so forth, so you don't have to paint them, just put these on. Wow, that's cool. Uh, you have some markers here, a uh, treant and a giant, fallen giant. Have those, that's cool. I believe I've got one of these or something like that in a white dwarf once, so I'm going to dig that out. 197, still got that. Um, you have these, which are little banners, so I'm going to scan those in. So you have a white one. Green and black, green and red, green and blue. That's cool. So you still even have stack complete. You even have this in there. You have this, which is use this grill to read the secret message on page 75 of the activity section. Lay the grill over the grill, grill message to reveal the true message. Write your own letters, write your own letter grids to send other messages to fellow spies. Excellent. I don't know what that is, but. I'm already impressed with this. Yeah, so I guess when, I, when we're having a look at this, um, I think that's just a bit of something from later on. There's a spinning thing here. The reason I wanted to go for fifth is because door. 
it was described as uh, Hero Hammer, I believe, by people uh, because it's all very hero centric, and that actually really appealed to me. Um, that really, really did appeal to me. Um, I think that comes from playing, you know, <coughs> role playing games, the board games like Warhammer Quest, Hero Quest, etc., and even the SBG game, because in that. It, that those are very hero centric games you know you you have a hero or hero group of heroes and they can turn the tide of the battle so that really appealed to me still can't read the other one so yeah i'm just digging this that one waffling um so we can have a good look so that is why i chose this edition of the game as well as the sixth i mean sixth is more just pure rank farm but i thought okay let's have a look what they mean by the heroes. So, the next video I'll probably do is once I've read the rules um, and got a gist of it. Of course, I won't be able to play with anyone at the moment because of the current situation and we're all locked down. So, I'm just going to grab all this out. Yeah, so there's all the shields. There's eight shields. So, you have two on each side of the tower. Uh, two maps. A load of these windows. So this is good. I don't know if I'm going to permanently set this up or what. Okay, is that everything from here? Oh yeah, that is everything from here. Cool. So yeah, we have these sort of things. So this is, when I said that's done, I don't know if we need that or anything, but just in case it has that. We have that. So we have a green, two green, two normal explosions. We have this thing. Double-sided. <laughs> A lot of us don't have this thing. I don't know what it is. Not played today, but we have that. We have the buildings. So we have we have three different types of buildings. We have the old wooden timbered building. So that would set up like this. I'm not too sure what these windows are actually for. Are they for the tower? Well, I'll have to find out. So it looks like you're going to have to glue them. So it looks like it was glued at one time. You can sort of see here, but very, very carefully taken apart. If it has been glued. Um, we have that. And it has a roof and a dormer type thing. Well, that's interesting. So what does this go? Does this go like this, I'm assuming? Yeah, aha. Uh -huh. Because it's got a slot for the door here. A dormitory thing here. So we have that building. Should be very carefully packed. So it has a chimney. Yay! Chimney. Oh, well, for detail, it has a. Then we have this kind of building, which is a smaller type wooden type building. Oh, that's the back. That's not very interesting. There it is. Shacky type building. So I'm assuming. If I can do it properly. But that's the roof for here. So look. Something like that. Yes. Oh. Yeah, cool. You have this little outhousey type thing door there. That's the roof for this. That's cool. I love. Oh, I loved getting to terrain like this back in the day. Um, I did have a chance to buy this back in the day. Actually, I was in Toys R Us and I was selling it in Toys R Us back in '95, I think it was. I was with my girlfriend at the time, now wife, and I didn't buy it. I bought something else. I might have bought the Dragon Strike game, which you've seen a retrospective on the channel one, but I might have bought that. So yeah, so we've got this tower, and the tower has the top of it here with the crenellations and articulations, is it? Well, it doesn't have those because it's just solid, but really you'd have holes here to shoot down. And I think the shields are meant to the shields attach onto here like this. But again, never been attached. So these are perfect. So I don't know. I probably am going to assemble it because I'm that kind of person. So you have that. That goes like that. And you have have yourself a tower. But how do you get up to it? I'm assuming that's what this is. This is going to be the steps. I guess and that will fall down. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, yes. 
Stop on these steps and then they go. Oh yeah, that fits together lovely, doesn't it? Sort of. But yeah, it goes in there. Steps going up to it. Brilliant. Like that. Carefully disassemble it, put it away in it. Have the dice. So yeah, we have ten normal D6s. And we have the scatter dice, I assume, because we've got arrows for things to scatter. And then you see if it's direct hit. And this is range artillery dice, I guess. It's got like numbers 2, 8, 10, 4, 6 there. That's a 6. And then this is misfire. So I'm assuming that's some sort of artillery dance so you could have a chance to misfire. What else have we got here? We have. Okay. The business reply service. Where were they based in? Uh, Hilltop, Eastwood, Nottingham. I don't think that's their current address now, is it? So uh, join the Games Workshop roster. Free prize draw. I'm entering this. When's the closing date? It doesn't say. That means it must still be open. Let's have a look at the questions. Where do you buy this game? GW mail order, GW store, department, Argos, etc. Specialist hobby store, other, eBay. That was a thing in 96. Which other games, uh, games workshop games do you play? Uh, Lord of the Rings SBG, or now Middle Earth SBG. Um, Warhammer Quest, Advanced Hero Quest. Uh, does Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay count as a GW game? Even though it's now Cubicle 7. Yes. Talisman. Where do you usually play your games? At home? Yep, at home. A friend's house, games club, your local GW store, other. Nope, at home in my gaming room called the Battling Barrow. What other armies do you own? How big are they? What percentage is painted? Yes, painted. So even back then, we knew we weren't painting our models. I forgot that. Now, what other armies do you own? Uh, I own a load of uh, Middle Earth SPG armies. So many to say. I don't really own a Warhammer army. Although I do have a load of Warhammer models. I think the closest I would look like I've got to one is probably Undead or Vampire Counts now. Or oh, Jesus, no Vampire Counts now, is it? Because uh, I have a load of skeletons, uh, some liches, some whites, some ghouls. I do have a lot of orcs painted up for these are all for Warhammer Quest and uh Advanced Hero Quest, so yeah. Yeah, I don't know if they're armies. Do you read White Dwarf magazine? I used to, yes. Now no, because uh, it doesn't appeal to me. Which armies will you collect next? Uh Bretonian. Undead Vampire Counts. Uh the Empire and Wood Elves. Free prize draw. Uh, why am I fixating on this? <laughs> Let's get on to the good stuff. Um, well, let's get on to this. How to assemble your Citadel Miniatures metal kit. Well, I think it's not metal in here, but it's even got this in here. So, you know, it's a little bit on how to assemble your models. Uh, that's cool. Oh, my goodness. I only just finished using my glue that looked like that. Blimey. Blimey, I've had that a long time. Okay, yeah, so this is assembling what looks like be an eagle. Cool. Even has that in there, even bits like this. So, as what else we've got, let's have a look at the. Uh, I guess these are what was referred to as the roster cards, I believe, in the back. So, yeah, unit 12 Petonian Bowmen. So, it has all its stats on here. So, that's well useful. So, it has, yeah, stats, champion, no armor, tell you what it is, points 12 times 96. So are they points times twelve equals ninety six. So okay, that's, I was about to say are they twelve points each, and then you have to do times ninety six. No, you have to see I'm a bit green to all this. Longbow range thirty inches, strength three, and then the stats. That's great. That's going to be useful. Notes on the back. Uh, we have six Bretonian knights of the realm. Oh, so even though I've got twenty four bowmen, this is saying the unit is twelve. That's interesting. So it's a unit of six Bretonian Knights of the Realm is 243 points. And it tells you champion, normal gear, knight champion, warhorse, stats, some no oh yeah, this is well handy. I like this. Twelve Sal uh, what did I actually say Sauros Warriors. So there we go, it's got those. Sauros champion again, that's cool. 
16 skinks. So even though we've got more than this, that's, I could maybe, my first aim to get them painted is just this many. So I can get a little game just of these four units. And then you have blank cards to write your own units on. That is a nifty little thing. That's cool. Like that. Uh, these are magic item cards. So uh, kind of looks like the magic spell deck cards for Warhammer Crest with its with the eight colleges, eight magic colleges around this thing. Also, you play Warhammer Silver Tower. You probably recognize this as the amulet that you have to collect in that. What have we got? We've got a potion of strength. Also got points value here, some rules and yada yada. So I take it that it's got some bit at the bottom. Is this just a brief synopsis at the bottom? Let's have a quick read. So yeah, the potent brew may be carried by any character. The potion of strength is so it's got a little bit of what it is. The potion of strength is made from troll's blood and gives the drinker a massive but momentary boost in vigor. So it's got a bit of a uh, fluff. And then this must be the rules. The character can drink the potion and start of any of his turns and his strength is increased by plus three for that turn there's sufficient potion for one use yeah so and it's that's what the rule is and this is its summary to give you a reminder plus three strength once use only armor of meteoric iron a war banner the dread banner ogre blade a blade of ensorcelled iron, an enchanted shield, really difficult to read these upside down, a biting blade, and back to the potion of strength. Yeah, because this video is only 26 minutes so far, <laughs> mainly because I was looking at that silly card, I thought we'd look at something else pointless. But it even comes with this. I remember getting these in the box sets in my got some black orcs, wood elves, some. Little orcs, I think I remember getting. Yeah, I remember getting these. These are brilliant. So, what it is, this is just an advert, but oh, so stylishly done. I mean, the paints, oh, those paint pots. Oh, they're the paint pots. You should bring back these back, Games Workshop. Thanks, hold on. Yes, because I've got a load. Bring these back, Games Workshop. They still have. Paint in, hang on. And you hear that shaking it up. They still have paint in, they still aren't dried out. Now that for a green scorpion green, rotting flesh. Used this just the other day to paint up some ghouls. Still good. Still good paint. Bring it back. These, these, those lids are the best. Those pots are the best. Not like these awful things here. These just dry out, gank out the lid drops and you blur. bring these back. Wow, this is a brilliant look down memory lane. I'm thoroughly enjoying this. It's like the 90s all over again. So I was never into 40K, never was, still aren't. So um, uh, nothing wrong with it. I think this is just the same stuff, but in the language I do not read. So that looks like, I don't know, upside down is even harder. So uh, if you recognize this language, well done you, but yeah, it's just this, it's just the advert in many different languages, I think that's German, I reckon that's German, French, it must be Spanish, I'm assuming Italian then. So yeah, that's cool, uh, yes, yeah, so that's the English versions come up here, but here we go. Uh, you see these, these boxes here, so what have we got here? Oh, you see them, so my eyes are terrible. But yeah, I remember these little boxes. Oh, they were great. If when you do the old world, bring back that paint for the old world and release them in boxes like this. Just brilliant. That'll be brilliant. That's what I want to see. These boxes. The red box era of Games Workshop was phenomenal. Just love it. Oh, so it's even got that in there. So that's that's pleased me. Um, but yeah, let's have a look at the make sure I pull this way the paperwork we've had a look at the plastic the bits and bobs now the paperwork so you've got the getting stuck you've got the getting started guide so that's cool it has a list of contents which we've all got in this box 
Uh, so we've got the rule book, battle book, 12, 12 uh, knights, 24 bowmen, 20 sauros, 32 skinks, three card buildings we've seen. Getting started booklet, that's this. A painting guide, ooh, a roster pad, ooh, six magic item cards, yeah, got those, seven file cards, yep. Yeah. Two Warhammer play sheets, card templates, two plastic range rulers, ten sixteen sided dice, and one scatter dice, and one artillery dice. It is called an artillery dice. Anyway, getting started, guys. So, uh, yeah, I'm definitely reading this first to get my head around this. This is just instant how to play, what all the rules mean. That's great. So, other than that, there we go. Little sort of mini, mini game turn here. Brilliant. Uh, finishing your building, so that's what they look like when they're complete. So, ah, the outhouse goes down on that side. Aha, that's what that bit is for. It goes over the door. Oh, I don't know how detailed that is for car buildings. That is beautiful. Love those. Yay, assembling the models. This is always good. There you go. Uh, how to do the buildings. Brilliant. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Okay, and that's my stamp. Now, before we get going on this, just in this in the box, I've got this. Did this come with it in the box? Well, it's just, just something that I've got in mind. I don't know what it is. It's like a massive newspaper cutting. Is this the mail order? Is this pre-internet how you'd order? Before we had internet, so it's massive. Um, yes, yeah, mail order form. So, oh my God, this is amazing. I'm not even allowed to get it all in, but that's the big mal order thing. So you have lizard men. I don't know if I'm gonna hit in the camera. Oh, there's the Bretonian side there. Look at that. Oh that is stunning. This is just a memory lane throwback. Like I've now knocked the mic, I'm so excited, but yeah. It's Bretonian stuff there. So I wanna definitely wanna get one of those. Oh, oh yeah. Oh. Out of the back. That's everything you got on this set on the back. Oh, I love the stone trolls. Yeah, there's my other camera. My camera here is the uh, Black Orc Warlord. These are Black Orcs I love. Anyway, box packed away. So we've got all this. Uh, looks like some Empire stuff up the top here. High Elves here, just off camera. Orky Walks, Skaven, Wood Elves. This is what I want to get hold of. This book, these models. I don't have the ones I have, but the box set of how much were they? They were just uh, wood elf archers and wood elf archers. Probably that there. Didn't get a musician standing. I never remember that. Hmm. Hmm. Anyway, uh, dark elves here. Undead up here off camera. Oh yeah. Undead there. Uh, Warhammer Chaos, Dwarves here, yeah. and then oh, one here. Ah, Chaos Dwarves. Remember Chaos Dwarves? Uh, Chaos Dwarves. I think I've got some models that are even older than this release here. Chaos Dwarves. They look like squatty Russians here. Oh, hum. I think I've got that model somewhere. Anyway, yes, yeah, so I'm getting sidetracked once again, looking at things that aren't really relevant to what we're doing. The rule book, that's what we want to do. Now, the sixth edition rule book was uh, in black and white. Well, I've lost it now, I don't know where I've put it. It was in black and white. So it, it just had, it was mainly in black and white, but it did have like color sections. So the inside color's color, and then some bits here with color, and then black and white. Uh, there's not a bit of colour somewhere else. Yeah, there we go. So, but mainly black and white, but quite thick. Whereas the rule book here, not as thick, but it does have this extra book here. So that's pretty much the same thickness. Actually, if you include the how to paint stuff, we'll get into. So, yeah, the reason I'm bringing this up because I know this already because this book. Oh yes, it is fully colour. So that means you can have a look at this gorgeous artwork in colour. The rules are in colour, even these little funny bits, which I do love. White Dwarf had little snippets like that. So when I look at the models here, they're in colour. 
They are all in colour. Oh my goodness. Oh, that's good. That is good. I mean, so you look here, all the models, all the glorious rules are in colour. Oh, I'm gonna love reading this. I mean, I enjoy. I got the rules, but I just the black and white just found it a bit lame reading it. I don't like black and white rule, rule books. On, I'm a sucker for colour. Uh, I have to admit, if something's in colour, I'm gonna read it. Just and then get because uh, I'm a terrain guy really, uh, and I love terrain. So when I see things like this, rule books of terrain, I want to see it in colour and. Whilst I got loads of these style of trees, and whilst I don't use them for things like Middle Earth SPG, because I want that to be sort of movie realistic, as it were, for Warhammer, I don't. I want to go down that route of the sort of more comic, cartoony esque style. And I actually feel that's what modern Warhammer moved away from, uh, this, especially Age of Sigma as well. So, 7th, 8th, and Age of Sigma moved away from this sort of look and feel. These. I know they've still sort of had stuff like that, but it just seemed to move away from me or move away from that style that I like. Um, so yeah, this is full colour. It's gorgeous. Uh, I'm going to so enjoy reading through this. Uh, uh -huh. Great. Oh, no, Pink Horus. Old Pink Horus. I recognise you from Silver Tower. Uh, oh, just those buildings. Oh, yeah. Oh, it just sounds like I'm looking at something I shouldn't be looking at <laughs> but it's so nice it's so nice it's taking me right back I mean look at that if that doesn't invoke just awesomeness I don't know what it does so yeah that's the rule book in full color have I mentioned it's in full color and now this the battle book which I don't know what it is before I bought this, I was actually going to bid on these books separate, and I didn't know what this is, but uh, I'm glad I didn't, so I'm assuming, oh god, more full colour, is this all in full colour as well? Oh yes, oh, more full colour stuff here. That's some demonettes, I'm trying to track these down for Advanced Hero Quest, and a mixed monster matrix. Um, hello full colour glorious terrain I'm looking at and getting terribly excited about. I don't know. Oh my goodness, look at the model skeletons. Uh, skeletons. The oh, reason I'm saying skeletons like that is because that's here next to me. I have skeletons. Hey. Hello. Hello. Anyway, I should not do reviews. <laughs> is this a review? No, this is a ramble. This is a ramble down memory lane. An almost 40 minute ramble down memory lane. Oh my goodness. Uh, I want to see if I can see again these boxes there. Be brilliant. Just that's how old, older world you come in, and those paints. It's got a little uh, paint chart here. That's great. The old colours here. Let's have a look. Like wash. I won't get to that in a minute. So this is all about the models. What you, you need to play. So it's not the rules. It's like a little synopsis. Uh, some scenarios. Ah, oh, that's good. I see. So you got the rules, and then separated out is the scenarios. So interesting way to play. Always about scenery there. That's cool. I like that terrain generator table. Excellent. Always good. Uh, so we got our uh, roster sheet. Here all filled in. So it's an example army. So um, it's going to spin this around so I can see. This is a total of 997 points, because this is kind of what I wanted, so this will tell me what I need to do. Uh, Bretonian General, Battle Standard Bearer, 1 Hero, 6 Knights of the Realm, 5 Knights of the Realm, 12 Bowmen, 12 Bowmen. So, I can almost do this. I just need some Heroes and Standard Bearer. That's brilliant. So I like that. That's giving me an example army and one for the Lizardmen here, so I can act something to aim for. That's what something I've been... Can't find out in the sixth edition books. Uh, oh, bestry. No example army list, so I can just have something to aim towards. It's not like I can just go down and shop and buy them. You have to plan ahead and scale the second hand market. Oh, my days is this, and this is the sort of thing I want. This whole reason what I talked about in the intro about wanting to play this the background, the lore of the world. That's a box for a war request. You know, this is it. Ah, oh, yes. Love maps. This is what it's all about for me. Uh, Bretonian army list cover for the 4th or 5th edition. So it's going into background in the armies. Oh, even in one book. It's brilliant. Normally, 
Oh yes, even got uh, profiles here for stuff as well. So whilst you could buy the army books to get more information, you're getting a lot of it in this book. This is bloody excellent. Possibly see why they stopped it though, because you know you've got this. Do I need to buy the empire? Uh, empire, <laughs> the army books now. Oh yeah. Oh well, I. There's a man. This would be a good Greek for me because so I know nothing about this. This is in Lustria, isn't it? This is one bit of uh, the old world I don't know about. I fixated on the main part of it. So I'll have a read of that. Orcs. Glorious Orcs. I don't know why I'm singing now. I'm too excited. Oh, wow. Um, yes, that is that is a cool picture. T Rex. Because. I'm a mofo T-Rex, um, and some obviously semi-naked ladies. Uh, yeah, I just loved the uh, style back then. Now, never interested in Dark Elves, that makes me interested in Dark Elves. Ah, the old Stumpies. Chaos. Evil Chaos. Wood Elves. Oh, the Wood Elves is just fantastic art. Oh, I'm just... Uh, this, I remember buying White Dwarf 197 and just falling in love with that issue. Still one of my favourite ever issues, just looking at all those wood elves. So, yeah, that's lovely. And there's loads of thing about monsters in here, I guess. Oh, yeah, there is. Look, look at this. So we're going to go into monsters. I just want to go back a bit, because this is another thing what I love about White Dwarf. It seemed to drop off after a while. It had these medieval creatures in, uh, European medieval creatures, Chimera, Cockatrice, the giant chicken monster thing. Dragons, gonna love a dragon. I'm paying some really old Citadel dragons at the moment. I mean, really old. Pre this, but almost 10 years pre this. I think one of them's 12 years pre this, 1982. One of my dragons comes in, sculpted by Michael Perry, pre Slaughter. So yeah, you know, we've got loads of stuff about monsters in here, which, I don't know, seem to drop off. You only had selected ones like dragons and giants, whereas this had full gambit of monsters. I think there's even should be a manticore in here. Griffins, great eagles, hippogriffs, halflings, they're in the monsters. Little thieving so-and-sos. Harpies, brilliant. Hydras, so it really did make it seem like a massive fantasy world. Great for manacles, there we go. Great for manacles. Uh, great for your role plan needs. And also, what I believe you can do with this, the profiles of this are one to one translation for Warhammer Quest. So, I want to include more monsters that I don't have in the book or whatever. I can just turn to here. I dare say most of them are in Warhammer Quest, had loads. But yeah, there's that. This is excellent. Cool. Go and buy this book if you haven't got it. If you're in the Warhammer, the world of Warhammer, that is excellent. I enjoy reading that. How to paint your models. Again, this is the picture from the Bretonian Army book for this edition. This would be quite useful, I guess, if you're getting started. Um, here's your quick overview to get them painting very basic. I don't know, that one's not, gets better. I mean, look at that. I thought I was just looking at this. So it's just base. What's this? Yeah, I tell you what, it ends up looking quite good. I shall have a read of this, actually. Yeah. Uh, I forget what I saw. Probably in that other book I just put clothes where I had the paints. But I just had the old colour paints. Blood red and everything. A roster sheet. He's even got a roster sheet. I don't know if this is full or if some have been used. But, you know, I have a roster sheet. Now, in nowadays, I'd probably scan and print this off or just photocopy it in my printer roster sheet brilliant got that and what these are two play sheets to give to players with the rule summaries and your charts on and yeah that is everything you get and that is a lot i mean that is 45 minutes of me just gushing really that is brilliant so yeah um what I'm going to do is grab issue 197 with a jump cut you hopefully didn't notice. Uh, why? Because this is my favourite issue. I mean, sort of in this art in the book, but yay. Because in here, from all these years ago, these are Warhammer Quest cards. And now in my homemade Warhammer Quest set, we have this. So I can finally add to it, put him, his little brother. Hello, 
little brother. Hello. So it's just exact, pretty much the same. But I'm going to finally, after all these years of owning it, pop it out and use it in a game. Pop, use it in this. There we go. Yay. Boom. Two of those now. So, uh, oh, that tells me how to read it. Oh, whoa. Still got the uh, whatever these are. Uh, I'm assuming this is 40,000 thing. So, I've still got these. What are these? Don't know. What's it for? Anyway, getting sidetracked between a whole different game. Why am Chris locking them? Also, uh, going for, uh, uh, I don't know. Don't tell me. Can't read upside down. Space Hulk. Can't. All got these for Space Hulk still in here. But yay. That's it. So, anyway. That has been a lovely walk down memory lane. Uh, it's probably far too long, far too rambly, but I've enjoyed it, and I really hope you have too. Um, obviously, I wasn't planning on doing this. It was because uh, we wanted, we were going to be doing lots of Once Hero Quest campaign games, but we can't at the moment because of the current situation and lockdown. And I hope you all stand safe and you continue to stay safe. Until the next time, guys, please take care.